Welcome to Heart the Hearties. We hope you all enjoyed episode three, which was titled, Oh Baby. I'm Delcy from Puerto Rico, and I'm happy to be here today with all my friends. That's Kim McDonald from Barrie, Ontario. Hey guys, it's Jeanette from Michigan. We are so excited today to have another member of our awesome writing team today with us, Ali Devereaux. Welcome, Ali. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me back on the show. Really loved this last year when we got to do our, our little chat. So I'm excited to be back. So did we. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And before we jump into episode three and all the questions from the Hardys, we, we were wondering like, how are you all holding up? I mean, the WGA strike has been going on for more than like three months and with season 10 airing right now and then season 11 filming that creates you know like a big workload for the Canadian writing team so tell us how are you all dividing the work in like doing all of this you know with the showrunner not being able to be there on set yeah so um, obviously we miss our um, American counterparts who've been with us um, luckily this year we actually started I don't know if Derek shared this. I think maybe he did, but we started early. So usually our writer's room starts in May, but we actually got to start in February this year. So we had a big chunk of the scripts done before um, our American WGA friends had to go pens down for the strike. So that definitely helped. Um, but obviously, you know, our team went down, you know, we were a room of eight, including our, our writer's assistant and script coordinator. And now there's three of us. So <laughs> definitely um we feel it and we miss them and i mean part of a writer's room is that every writer brings something a little different so we're definitely missing them as um they're on strike but we totally support the strike and you know we just hope it gets um gets resolved soon and that they can come back and join us and also that they get to enjoy it because that's the other thing that they're sort of missing out right now is that um you know as the season's airing and and premiering season 10 that we did last year I just know, I have talked to Lindsay about this, about how much she wishes that she could be on here talking with you guys and and getting to promote the season. And um, we all understand why she can't, but you know, I, I do feel for her and Paul and um, wish that they could be here and hope that they're here with us soon. You, uh, you mentioned uh, that Paul is not with you because of um, the strike, but uh, he was actually the one who wrote this episode. Is that right? Um, episode yeah. three? And it was directed by Peter Delawy. Um, so Paul was new to the team in season 10. Um, but, you know, if we didn't know better, we would have thought that this uh, episode was written by a woman because uh, he did, he nailed a lot of uh, important things. Like, there's nothing worse than bad baby shower games. <laughs> Aren't this, is not the case. Totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paul has been great. He was a great addition and him and Lindsay really just like jumped in, but honestly, what an episode to kind of start. So like for Paul, he just got Rosemary really quick. Um, <laughs> but if I'm being completely honest, I have to say, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about this shower in the room because obviously, you know, everybody's been waiting for Rosemary and Lee to have a baby for a long time. So we've been waiting for this shower for years um and so we spent some time talking about what we like and what we don't like and i will admit that uh you know i may or may not have mentioned my own dislike of the the game don't say baby because you know if you're chatty i'm a chatty person and so is rosemary and if you're a chatty person that gets talking you always lose really fast so it can be a really frustrating game to play um so i i don't know if i inspired that with paul but i, I like to think maybe my passion for it may have inspired him a little bit oh that's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah is it correct if anyone that... asks anyone asks why she ha disliked it so much it's because she talks a lot of course she's gonna dislike a game where she can't say a word <laughs> <laughs> for sure makes a lot of sense is it correct can i ask real quick that um paul did paul and Lindsay work together before coming to win calls it seems yeah, like derek been, mentioned that 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 was they, the case. they've known each other for a long time they have worked together they're actually neighbors um so oh. Uh, oh, they're wow. really good friends and yeah they they've known each other for a long time so they came on already knowing each other and having worked together before and um yeah so that was actually really helpful um because they came yeah. in as a dynamic duo you know instead of just coming brand new to the show alone i think it, it helped both of them as well and they kind of know each other's style and 
yeah, there'd be plenty of times where she's like, you know, I just walked over to Paul's house to to figure this story out. We talked it through. So uh, yeah, they did they did know each other before. Um, and then we just all jumped in as well <laughs> to get to know them. Yeah, that's yeah. really neat. <laughs> um, so we were all, you were mentioning, you know, that you were all having some input into this uh, baby shower and, and of course, Rosemary's pregnancy. And that, like you said, we've all been uh, uh, looking forward to this for quite some time. So we were all tearing up during those sisterhood hood moments. Wow, I can't speak today. <laughs> when uh, Minnie gave everyone the candles at the shower. And uh, when Rosie said Elizabeth was the sister she never had, that was so sweet. This uh, community of women has been through a lot together. Um, can you tell us how the writer's room developed the role of sisterhood this season? I think it was just gonna be cooked in no matter what. I don't know if this is the first time but um, this year or season 10, our writer's room was more women than it was men. So we had uh, Lindsay, uh, Beth Stewart, Elizabeth Stewart, who's been on the show for a while, um, then myself and Ayla Glass, who was our new story editor and wrote episode five. Um, so that was four women to Paul and Derek being the two men of the room. So I think Sisterhood was going to be cooked in no matter what, because <laughs> we just, there was a lot of girl power and girl discussion and girl female point of view, obviously, in the room. Um, so I think it was going to be sort of cooked in there, um, just from all our own, um, feelings of sisterhood with each other as well. Um, but it's also the heart of the show. Like, you know, this show is about strong women. It started with, you know, a group of widows and a young woman who came to the frontier. Like just, it's something that I loved about the show when I started watching and it's carried through. So I'm really excited that it's kind of bleeding in and that everyone still feels it because I think it's such an important part of the show. Um, particularly though that candle moment, we all thought that that was really beautiful. And I did, um, I can say this because, you know, it's brought to us by Lindsay and I texted her to ask if it was okay if I shared this little anecdote, um, but that's actually a family tradition of hers. So oh. as we were writing this season, um, she had a niece that was born and she was telling us about lighting the candle and um, totally inspired all of us because, you know, it's a, an amazing tradition and it's so beautiful as Minnie explains it and as Lindsay explains it that, you know, her, her family does this and it's just such a nice, beautiful moment, you know, for the expectant mother and um, yeah, I'm so glad that it that it's in the show and I'm really thankful that Lindsay shared it with us. So I wish she could share that with you guys, but she said it's okay that I tell you. <laughs> it went over really well. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I hope other people adopt it because I think it's really yeah. sweet. I, you know, I've been yeah. telling all my friends about it. Well, and what a cool way to sort of, it's like a visual of the unity of the community. And in scenarios, like in real life families, you can think about like, if you were all separated, but wanted to be supportive somehow, there's something really cool of thinking about family members everywhere, kind of lighting candles at the same time and support, um, even yeah. if you couldn't be like there kind of thing. Yeah. Even now it's a text chain, you know, you can text pictures of your, yeah. your, um, and if you're, you're doing the 2023 version, you can text a photo of your, in a group <laughs> chat of your candles together. Oh my gosh. I love that group chat with all yeah. the candle pictures. I love it. Yeah. Oh, be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the sisterhood, we have uh, Dr. Carter this season has a big storyline and before she can deliver a baby, she was out there surviving her rounds with a unexpected guests <laughs> with Mountie Nathan. Um, mm -hmm. Hardys are loving talking about this storyline. I don't know if you've seen some of the tweets and, and all the speculation happening there, but is there anything more you can tease about, about Nathan and Faith? Well, I just think like, I, I really loved seeing them together. I think last night's episode just really showed that they're just, they kind of bring out some interesting sides of each other, you know, Sometimes Nathan, it feels like he can just rely on that charm and it, it's on faith. She's like, no, sir, give me the reins of this is my buckboard. You know, <laughs> yeah. she challenges him a bit with it. And so you just get to see kind of uh, a different side to both of them. And I just think that's part of what's been so fun of seeing them, you know, get to know each other. And we definitely will see a little more of that. I think, you know, we're just, we're going to learn a little more about them as they're like navigating things together, but it might not be in the way you expect to to see them grow but I, I think it's really fun and it's a really interesting uh story route for them so I'm excited about it yeah. and what it brings 
And last night felt like one of the first episodes where we got just a lot of, you got to really see that banter between them highlighted. I mean, the back and Mm -hmm. forth was just, was just really great with them. So we can't. Yeah. I think it's just, it's just a fun, it's just a, it's a fun pairing that we haven't seen before. And that's one of my favorite things in the show is when you get to see people who you haven't seen interact all that much. Yeah. It's not exactly the same, but, you know, I love seeing May and Fiona together this season and sort of the new yeah. dynamic that they that they set up. Like, they were calling me gold last night. You could see it, that they're just a great dynamic yeah. duo. So it's always fun to kind of pair people up that haven't, we haven't seen together as much on the show and see especially, what, what comes out of it. Especially after 10 seasons where, you know, as hard as you feel like you've seen everybody interact, but it's pretty cool when you find people who haven't yet to, to do that. Yeah, the, the writers keep surprising us. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's Hope Valley. Hope Valley just brings out new surprises, and we we start talking about it. We're like, how can, um, how can we make this dynamic? But that's the the beauty of the small town is that it's it's just mm-hmm. situational. You see these people in different situations, and they bring out a new side. And then as the audience learns more, and the characters learn more, you're kind of on the journey together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we do have some hearty questions this time around. Uh, we had okay. Linda Abercrombie of Redding, California. Um, she was among the hearties. There were quite a few who loved the blank paper that Lucas used to force Jerome Smith to drop the charges against Henry. Um, it was really kind of interesting to see how you, because we know Lucas is a card player, so it was it was kind of neat to see that leaned into. And then at the end where he was kind of like with Elizabeth, is this okay? You know, how, how do you feel about it kind of thing? Um, can you talk a little bit about that process and why you kind of went that direction with the with the bluff there that he played for Jerome? Yeah, I mean, I also, I just, I thought that was such a fun scene when I read it. And uh, like, I think Paul did a great job. Um, and, um, you know, at the beginning of the season, every season we sort of start with a bit of a review, but especially because we had three new writers this season, Lindsay, Paul, and Ayla were all new to the show. We spent a lot of time just like uh, going through the arcs and, and how each character started and sort of just talking about who they are as people. And, you know, as we were sort of talking through Lucas's past and sort of his, you know, beginnings in Hope Valley when he was le- leaned a little more on that uh, maybe gambler side of things, um, it just kind of sparked those discussions, kind of sparked a really fun idea of like that being part of who he is in a way. But now he's sort of using his skills, Hope Valley style to save the day. Yes, and yes, love it. <laughs> so, you know, it's just we get to see a lot of his growth this season in a really fun way and we're kind of trying to like tie that in where it's like it's all part of who he is but Hope Valley has just made him into this man we know now so he's not all the way gone it's just he can use his skills Hope Valley style yeah it like totally flipped the script on it and to see it hit him use it to help a friend basically it was Mm -hmm. just very cool yeah it's kind of like when we see you know Bill use his forensic investigating skills that's his his sort of past but he brings it into the to save Hope Valley as needed even if it's just investigating a hot spring. And we have another question from Jacqueline Hawkins of Bowie, Maryland. And this is something that I feel like a lot of parties were mentioning. So she has missed seeing the cousins at the Queen of Hearts, Gustav and Lucas. Um, And we know that uh, Gustav made some of the cakes that were, the cakes that were shown in that episode. So are we going to get some like screen time with Lucas and Gustav like so like the scenes with them I know I'm I'm, we miss Gustav and Lucas too we did try this season to sort of bring it in there was just a lot of guest stars in making the schedule work we don't really get to see Lucas or and Gustav interact this season but we still wanted to keep that alive um so yeah you'll still hear little things about Gustav you'll be kept up to date even if you're not seeing him but that brings up something else that I will say, you know, in terms of this, I can tease, you know, that there might be one or two more familiar faces that we haven't seen in a while in Hope Valley coming up that I'm super excited about. And maybe the Hardys might not be expecting them, sort of like we were able to bring Julie and on Agatha back. There's a, a couple more faces that we're just so excited that we were able to make work this season. Um, so you can look forward to that as well. Yeah, but oh that's all gosh. I can say. <laughs> as, as Hardys are now going through all this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did it surprise you how much I saw a lot of tweets about people talking about Gustav? Did it surprise you that the Hardys are kind of attached to him at this point? 
Um, well, we kind of, we really love him too. It's it's a mm. fun dynamic. I actually think he we realized this last year, or maybe even in season nine, that he uh, it was Beth Beth Stewart that that sort of created Gustav, and she you know it's sort of not going to be a huge thing, but just he became this great sort of uh, partner for Lucas that you get to sort of hear what Lucas is thinking. It was a great person that you could hear Lucas's thoughts to. Now we sort of see. Lucas share his feelings with Elizabeth a little more. So a lot of their mm -hmm. scene, a lot of the Lucas scenes that are just one and one talking about things are now with Elizabeth. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that, you know, Gustav is family. And, you know, we've seen Lucas's family, you know, his mom, but it's cool that Gustav is there and he's family. So to see them interact with each other is is really great. And you can hear a little bit about their like it brings up family. We can talk about Lucas's family through Gustav as well, bringing mm -hmm. up details about his French grandmother who, you know, we haven't gotten to meet, but we get some of that family history. I love bringing family history stuff into the show. I think it just, yeah, I think it just opens the world a little more. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we were talking with uh, Brian Bird last week and he was saying that one of his goals, you know, in, each episode is to always, you know, have a good, like, have a good cry, and then three laughs per episode. Um, and I feel like there were a lot of moments that made us laugh, and uh, particularly, you know, with the woman conspiring to full, pull off the, the baby shower. And Peter DeLuise was the director of this episode. Can you give us insight into, like, how he directs and how he brings out the humor that essentially you know starts on the page peter is just i i will say this he is a comedic genius i i love watching what he does i love watching dailies of his when it's you know uh, when we know it's going to be a comedy scene and peter's directing sometimes we talk about it even when we're talking in the room we're like oh this is peter's block he's we can go a little bigger because he's gonna love bigger you know he likes he really likes leaning into that and I think he also allows moments to just happen like he catches them for example the bell that was not in the script we that was a surprise for us to see too it i, I guess that deck had found this bell and we didn't know the bell was going to be there and 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 peter saw the opportunity and he went for it with the bell and okay. jamie so we watched the dailies and we were all texting each other in the morning being like where's the bell that's amazing like the bell it's, it's you know we don't always get to watch scenes and be surprised for, as coming from the writer's room but this was something we weren't expecting and it just came up in the moment and peter saw the opportunity and really went for it so um it's just a great example of how he is as a director and if he knows there's something that will land uh, he'll go for it and um yeah it always makes it better it always makes the scenes better so yeah i think you could really see a lot of his influence i loved watching all the um the way the shot was set up in the barber shop when Rosemary's back here covered and all the party guests are going behind with, the, um, it, because we just wrote, you know, they're rushing by with party supplies. And all of a sudden we, when we're watching it, we see there's that big arch that they're walking by. Again, just going for it where, you know, we think it's funny they're sneaking by with party supplies. And then the way it, it's like three men carrying a huge arc, like arc of flowers. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's just he 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 knows when to go for the moments, and then of course you know the actors also bring their own humor in, um, with some of the facial expressions, and um, they know to go for the moment as well. I think Erin, all her gestures, and she was doing this, like all it was just. I'm not an actor; I can't do it as cute as she did it, but it was very. Um, it, I just found it really fun to watch. So, yeah, Another I think guy. it's a a group effort for sure. Another cool shot I caught when I was rewatching it was um, when the shower is actually taking place and he started with a shot of the egg salad after the egg salad had been discussed several times and like I, to the group. So good. I texted him actually about that last night when I was watching because I didn't catch it when I watched the lot locked cuts. I caught it only when I was watching it live last night and I texted him and I was like, oh my gosh, it's egg salad. And he's like, which no one ate. Right, and they're not like it's a whole bowl. It's a whole so bowl good. and it's not touched. It's just sitting there. Um, so, so yeah, they're, they're just some really, really great moments. And um, it's kind of fun because they are moments that you can watch a few times and not notice and then you go back and you're still laughing. And I think um, that means it was a success. 
So really yeah. a lot of props to Peter for that. <laughs> I have to go back and catch that now, Janetta. Yeah, you, that. you do. I love egg salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rachel Adams from Southfield, uh, Michigan. She wonders if we're going to meet Rosemary's mother this season. I feel like you probably can't tell us that. Or will we at least learn more about her? I can show that you will learn more about her. Okay. And um, it is a storyline that I just found is, it, honestly, it was one of my favorite storylines this season, um, is getting to hear that part of Rosemary's past. Like, we just get to see that that Rose, that motherhood really expect, like, um, impacted Rosemary in ways that she didn't expect. She, you know, she has wanted a baby for so long, but it's just bringing up feelings that she wasn't expecting it to bring up, which we're seeing now in, in little bits as it's revealed, um, feelings about her mom. And, you know, for somebody who talks a lot about her past, we, in the show, have maybe heard of her, her mother mentioned once or twice in you know, once in a Christmas special, she talks about my mother said this, and that's it, you know, that's all. And so it's really not something that we've heard that much about. And um, this season, we really get to get into the reason why that is. And I think it just opens up a really beautiful story that's about mothers and children. And um, yeah, it, it just actually watching some of these scenes makes me cry every time I watch it. And I've seen them many times, so in a beautiful way. Um, so I, I think it's a storyline that's going to build over the season. But um, I hope that you guys feel as um, passionate about it as I do, as it as it grows and as you see where it's going. Because I just think it's a, a different side of Rosemary than we've ever seen. But it's a really beautiful side, a really vulnerable side. So I'm really excited. So you will know more. And um, but it's just, it's going to happen over a, a, a bit of time. Well, I think we love yeah. those. We love those vulnerable moments from Pascal. Yeah. She just knocks them out of the park. So good. It's great. Yeah. Oh. She, there's a few times that she's made me cry and I <laughs> texted and I was like, I'm crying watching the dailies. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Well, if so, you were yeah. crying, lots we're to be look crying a lot. <laughs> lots to look forward to, but in a good way, you know, you'll feel it. It's, it's in a beautiful way. Yeah. Very cool. Especially next week. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so we also hear that the new writer, Paul um, Redford, worked with uh, screenwriter Aaron Sorkin on The West Wing. Now, Aaron Sorkin's famous for his rapid fire dialogue. I love that. Uh, are you seeing any Sorkin influence in the writer's room as a result of that uh, work that he'd done in the past? Yeah, Paul has, you know, he, I think he actually worked with Aaron a couple of times because he also worked on Newsroom as well. Um, okay. So he has, yeah, he, Paul's had a, a great career and, and um, he has lots of amazing stories, you know, some of the best stories. Um, so I, I actually just really hope that this, when the strike's resolved and then it's resolved soon, you guys can have Paul on here because, yeah, he has just so many stories to share with you and he'll be so excited to share them. Um, so yeah, we definitely get, I, I feel like I learned a lot from Paul and I'm, I'm really thankful that I've gotten to work with him the last two seasons. Um, yeah, I just, I'm excited for you guys to all chat with him. He definitely brings his own style into the room. And, you know, there's just, I can't spoil too much, but towards the end of the season, you will see some real Paul influence of some of the storylines and um, they're a bit unexpected for the show, but they fit perfectly. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited. Once you get towards episode nine, 10, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And I hope that the strike is resolved by then. So Paul can come talk to you about it. <laughs> so that you don't Sorry, have to fill in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just love it up to him for, for uh, episode nine. <laughs> we would love that. Oh, so Paul, if you're watching. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, I'm just volunteering him. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> Yeah. We're not scary, <laughs> Paul. It'll be okay. <laughs> no. yeah. well, oh, that's there, great. there was a lot of chatter this week about our new mystery woman who came to town, Madeline St. John. Um, Minnie Beth from Plain City, Ohio wants to know what she's up to and that the uh, interesting phone call at the end of the episode has a lot of us intrigued. There's definitely a lot more going on there that we don't know yet. 
Yeah, she's an interesting character. First of all, great name, Mini Beth. It's, uh, any name that's, you know, here we go. We got uh, yeah. a mini as well. So love it. Yeah, very um, Hope Valley. <laughs> very Hope Valley. Um, yeah, it's like a combination of Minnie and Elizabeth, that name. So I love it. Um, but yeah, no, Madeline, um, she's a complicated character, but that's kind of what makes her so, so fun to write and sort of to explore. She has a lot of layers to her. So, you know, I think it's just, it's very clear she's totally not Hope Valley. You know, she walks into town, she parks her car at the hitching post. You know, you can just see right from the get-go that she's not quite Hope Valley. Um, but sometimes people that come to town that aren't quite Hope Valley, um, they end up learning the most from the town. Um, so, you know, I think, yeah, she's gonna take us on a, a couple twists and turns through the season. Maybe what you're, not quite what you're expecting in, in the way just from that phone call, but, you know, um, She's definitely, she's a really interesting character and she's going to help take us on a, a really interesting journey um, this season. So uh, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, she's, a, she has layers. This character has yeah. many layers that you're already seeing. She's been there one episode, you're already like, What's going but on? I will also say, you know, I think she's kind of already, her and Jamie have sort of already brought out this really fun side in Bill. Um, and that will definitely develop as uh, her stay in Hope Valley extends. Um, we'll see more of Madeline and, and Bill and Jamie together. And I just think it kind of creates a really fun dynamic, sort of like what we saw. Um, I love him sort of being a shadow and he just kind of crosses his arms too at the, at the hot <laughs> springs. And, you know, just getting to see a, a different side uh, of Bill in that way. And I think we've already just, we've gotten to see um, Bill in a whole new light this season. And I think it's really exciting. And Madeline's a big part of that, continues to be a big part of that. So yeah, that's about all I can share. Um, yeah, I mean, it's giving any spoilers away, but yeah, it's really clear right up from the get go that there's a lot of layers there to unpack. And that's what's so fun about those new characters is it's just like layer after layer. And what are you going to find next kind of thing? So um, well, sometimes you have newcomers that come to Hope Valley and you just know this is their perfect place to land like the camp fields, they just seamlessly fit in. Um, but even they, you know, Minnie was a bit guarded. Hope Valley kind of wears on you a bit. And the farther you are from Hope Valley, the more interesting that journey to, you know, coming yeah. into Hope Valley can be, yeah. Yeah, so true. It, on that note with the with Jamie, who's, what a talented little actor that, that kid is. It's an, He's a nice addition. And it was kind yeah. of fun to see Bill interact with the kids. We were we were talking before we were going to have the call today and that it was nice to see the classroom scenes again and we're seeing more of the kids this season. Um, is there more of that coming? Like, can we anticipate seeing a lot of the kids this season? You can see a lot more of the kids. I think we've talked about this last season, but um, it definitely, um, because of COVID and be, sort of before the vaccines came in, we had like a little more restrictions this year. Um, we we just had a lot more freedom again to be able to be in the classrooms and we could bring some new kids in. You know, we get to finally meet Sarah Wolf and we have a new addition of Toby in the classroom. And so, yeah, you we will get to see some some more kids stories. Actually, there's a, a story coming up um, that I'm really excited about that is kind of kid driven. We get to see a, you know, sort of the kids doing their own thing. Um, and it was it, pretty fun, you know, just seeing how these kids that grew up together in a small town or sort of get to make some decisions on their own and it's just it's just fun to see them on their own as well yeah. love that well and it'll be interesting to see because clearly Jamie is you got you got the sense that he doesn't have a lot of friends and so it'll but he doesn't quite fit in with the Hope Valley kids yet so it'll be cool to see him kind of how that plays out with the kids of Hope Valley if they accept yeah. him or yeah. see a see a little bit of um the Hope Valley friendliness, if that rubs off on Jamie or not. It was right. it was definitely fun for us to to sort of play with that as well and just see, you know, what a, a city kid coming into Hope Valley might think. You know, we've got to see a few um, city adults coming into the town, but, you know, we had Hattie of back in oh, quite great. a few seasons ago that kind of mm -hmm. came in. But since then, we really haven't had a lot of uh, sort of uh, society side of um, of. Uh, kids coming through and, and even Hattie her her mom was a governess so she didn't grow up the same way we get to see Jamie has a little bit of more like high you know high society life and you know um, even he, he's 
maybe doesn't make the best impression on the kids because of that. You know, you have Toby who's sort of like, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> but I think it's just it creates a really fun dynamic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of personalities among the kids. It's so cool to see those develop over the years. Yeah, but yeah. you bring up Hattie is the perfect segue to you are known, of course, as the show Bible holder and the, <laughs> who knows all of the facts. We did see a little sneak peek of next week with the um, birth episode where the Christmas salami comes about, which parties will all have a good laugh about that. That's an example of something from the show Bible, I'm sure. I love that one. <laughs> I know, so good. Yeah. Classic, classic. But is there anything in season 10, anything big that you added to the show Bible this year that you can tell us about? <laughs> well, uh well of course you know there's we get to expand a little bit of family history which is always great you know I've talked about that I love um getting to kind of go into the family tree update some of that stuff and you know I'm a hearty myself so getting to add the details of and I'll be really careful not to say anything because we're in season 11 so I'm trying not to spoil anything baby Coulter (laughs) add all those details to nice. Lee and Rosemary's family tree was so exciting to me because you know it's been years in the making that we've been waiting for them to get to grow their family and getting to kind of just write all the details of this baby's life and how this life impacts the cultures mm-hmm. um just has been really just awesome for me to see just even as a fan getting to write it in um and I will also say there's some big shakeups you know, in town, we got to see a, a downfall and then a hot springs. We have a whole new location this season yeah. with the hot springs. So, you know, there's been a lot, there's a lo- been a lot this season already that I could add and a lot more coming. So, um, yeah, that's all I can share. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have you back on at the end and you can detail yeah, every can single thing you, yeah. <laughs> you added for season 10. <laughs> How many pages are you up to now? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty, I think we, we crossed 500. So we're, we're wow. Wow. history going now. Yep. That's so impressive. Yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. Um, mm-hmm. And Jeanette mentioned about the next week's episode, but um, the sneak peek that was released showed us Rosemary is going to suffer from high blood pressure during labor. And that has given us a lot of like, high blood pressure as the anticipation grows for next week's episode I am so excited I am I can't wait and so what can you tell us that will help us you know be at ease well so I'm not a mother myself I have not given birth but we I will say we have lots of parents in our room we have two moms we have two dads you know we have just like some you know I'm an aunt so you know so we just we see some We've seen it, um, and you know, it was kind of explained that you know birth can be really dramatic, um, from the sounds of it. I, again, have not experienced birth myself, but it's all worth it in the end, and that's the way this episode is, where, where you know there's some definitely drama and it's a bit high stakes, but it's all worth it in the end, and it's a really beautiful episode. There's also just a few really sweet unexpected moments, a few callbacks. Um, that you might not be expecting to be connected exactly to this episode. Um, and I'm really excited for y- you guys to see that because it, it, for me, it even surprised me a little bit when we were talking about it, but it fits perfectly. Um, and I just think it's some great moments that we haven't, we might not be expecting to see, but tie in really perfectly with the birth episode. So yes, there'll be some drama, but there's also lots of rewards, including the end. So right. yeah. And there's also like the the drama that comes in too with like giving birth during that time. Well, exactly. Uh, we spent a, a lot of time talking about that because at that time, um, usually the men weren't allowed um, there. It was just the doctor that was allowed. And we kind of see a little bit, bit of that in the promo where she's saying she needs Lee. But at mm-hmm. the time that was just not um, not done. Usually the men were not present for the birth. So um, yeah, there's extra layers of what the time period was that I didn't know about until we started talking about it and researching it and a lot of it um, Beth can talk to it when she comes um, on her talk because as the writer she did quite a bit of research into it and it's really interesting to learn you know just kind of how they did things back then Um, but we find a way to have the the cultures have their birth in their way that they would oh they would naturally do it yeah 
it wouldn't be a rosemary birth without a little bit of drama there has to be right. something involved uh, you you have to expect that baby culture is going to make a dramatic entrance <laughs> sure. you have to of course yeah. like mother like son or daughter we don't know yet <laughs> you're not going to catch me <laughs> i know i thought i could get that so close <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us, Allie. It's been a, a wonderful first three episodes and we can't wait to see where the season goes. And we'd love to be able to pick the writer's brains about this. And um, I feel like this Sunday, I kind of liked the candle idea when you brought up the group chat. I feel like Hardy's everywhere should like light their own candle and we can all tweet out our Put it in the Facebook here. group too. Right? You know, there's so many oh, members, yeah. everyone picks a candle and lights it. I think it would just be really beautiful to see, to see that. And um, yeah, That's please great. do. That's a great idea. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for, for spending some time with us again, Allie. It's always a joy to have you and, and pick your brain. Thanks for being here. Thank you guys so much for doing these chats. I learn things. I, I watch every episode. I'm a fan of even this after show, not just one called hard. I'm also a fan of Heart to Hardies. I watch every episode and I learn things that I, I didn't so know fun. because people talk about their processes and things that maybe we don't always talk about just when we're doing it. And then you, you learn. So yeah, I, I thank you guys for doing these chats. They're insightful even to us. So um, I know it's a lot of work and um, I just, I'm really thankful that you guys do it um, because watching it, even as a fan, I learn more and um, yeah, just, Good, great job. Thank you guys so much. Aww. That's so sweet. Well, we love doing them and we love sharing all your insights with the Hardys and bringing the Hardys questions to you. So, so Hardys, this week's episode is called Great Expectations. Yay. We're all just a little bit excited about this one. <laughs> Sunday at 9, 8 central on Hallmark channel. We will see you there. Make sure you tweet with us. Uh, use that hashtag Hardys. And then we'd love it if you want to keep seeing these chats from Heart to Hearties to, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you won't miss out on any of them. But thanks so much for joining us today and we'll see you Sunday night.